Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jakub, and I'm here today to uh, tell you a little bit of a story about how uh, we moved supercells and transformed them, uh, transformed them into uh, uh, super uh, cells and then regions. So the story, um, the, 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 the first part of the story is, this, is maybe the, 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 the part that all of you know quite well. So we have some uh, spatial data like satellite images and so on, and we want to get uh, some knowledge from it. So to, to do that, we need to generalize somehow. And one way to do that is to use uh, spatial segmentation. So bring together similarly looking uh, spaces and, and treat them as homogeneous areas. So we are thinking about keeping internal homogeneity but external isolation. And in terms, when you think about that uh, segmentation broader, we can also think about segmentation as regionalization, when we want to develop similar consistent regions. So in our case, regions are homogeneous internally, but different from surrounding regions. But this problem, the problem of spatial segmentation is just an optimization problem. So we don't know uh, how to very, very quickly, very, very efficiently get only like one perfect result. So we are using some kind of uh, heuristics. And therefore, uh, for those kind of problems, uh, people are often using different uh, approaches. And one of the often used approach is an approach of uh, using super, super pixels. So the idea of super pixel is basically that when we think about uh, raster data, when we have pixels, they uh, actually don't have a lot of uh, meaning. They are just the result of the products we have. And uh, our first step, our first goal is to mesh them together to find uh, similar pixels to create some uh, to, to reduce the dimensionality of our data uh, and to make the sense of our data. And for that purpose, one of the most often used super pixels algorithm is called SLEEK. So the, the idea of this algorithm is uh, fairly simple. So we start with this regularly uh, regular grid of points. So basically, we have uh, just central cells. And this central cell has some values. And then, for each, uh, for each point, we are looking around this point in like two by two window. So we are looking for like this area, and we are attracting similar other similar cells to us. So you can see that between the first and the second iteration, uh, each centroid attached uh, some surrounding cells, and then the new centroid is rec recalculated as an average uh, position of the. Of the of our uh, super pixels so of our polygon. So how how we are achieving that? We are achieving that by calculating a distance, and this distance consists of two parts. One part is the spatial distance. So we think that the cells that are closer to our centroids have like probably are more attached to this centroid. But the second part of our distance is the value distance. So we think if the this uh, cell is similar to us in values, it's also more, uh, more similar. So in total, our distance consists of these two parts, spatial distance and uh, value distance. Uh, and this is how those distances are calculated. So basically, in the SLEEK algorithm, in the, this uh, uh, established SLEEK algorithm, the, the value distance or the color or spectral distance is just uh, based on the lab color space. So we are just using Euclidean distance on the color values. And the uh, spatial distance is just a Euclidean distance in space. And then we can control, in using the SLEEK algorithm, we can control if we are more interested in uh, this color distance or in this spatial uh, uh, distance. And this algorithm works uh, in iterations. So you can see that iteration by iteration, our uh, super pixels became more and more homogeneous, more and more uh, internally uh, consistent. And they slightly move, as you can see uh, on, on this uh, animation. But uh, if you think about this algorithm, um, 
the base idea of this algorithm is uh, that we are using RGB images. So we are focusing on image data. At first, it was mostly RGB, uh, but next, people expand that uh, and started using also multispectral or even hyperspectral data uh, using this algorithm. But we are still only in the image domain. And our idea was, let's expand that. Because I usually don't work with images. I usually work with uh, spatial data, but in different contexts. So how can we take this uh, sleek algorithm and expand this algorithm to allow, for example, to, use, to create uh, some homogeneous regions using pattern information? So not only what's the value, but also what's the relationship between the neighbor values. Or we, can, we want to use some compositional information, so hist values uh, in terms of uh, some histograms of values. Or maybe you want to use time series information. Maybe you want to detect some uh, um, areas with the similar uh, time series. And maybe, maybe there are some other forms of information that you can think of that could not fit in this image um, approach. So our extension uh, is very simple. The main idea is that we are just taking this part of the distance, the, the color distance. So this is like Euclidean distance, and we are replacing that with whatever distance measure or dissimilarity measure you want to use. Depending on your data, you can decide on that. So for example, if I want to work with categorical uh, variables or uh, frequencies, I can, for example, use Shannon, uh, Jensen Shannon uh, distance. So I will, I will just replace Euclidean with Jensen Shannon, and that would make uh, more sense for my problem. And for example, if I have a, a time series, maybe I will use dynamic time warping. Or if I have two dimensional di uh, time series, I will use two dimensional dynamic time warping, and so on and so on. So we uh, made that idea and we uh, created an R uh, package called uh, supercells. So this package is, uh, implements this idea of extending the sleek algorithm. So in this package, you can use around uh, 50 distance measures that are implemented, but you can also use your own distance measures. But also, that's not the end of the story because uh, by default with the sleek algorithm, we are only thinking that new centroids are the averages of the previous uh, centroids. But maybe they should be medians or modes or minimum values. So we can also uh, change that. We can uh, apply different functions. So the, the package is here. That's the main website of the package with, uh, I hope, uh, good documentation. So then let's try this approach and compare that to different approaches. So here you can see with the bold uh, borders, that's our approach that we try to use. And, but we also tried some comp to compare different approaches. So we start with some raster data. But usually our raster data has many uh, layers, but usually it's not the image. It's, uh, it's a different type of geospatial raster data. And then we want to create some regions. We want to create some segments. So we, what we can do, we, what we could try to do, we could try to use, for example, k-means clustering. But if any of you try to use k-means clustering on raster data, you know that usually you will get like salt and pepper kind of a result and not very convincing, not very regionalized. Um, another approach maybe is used to some graph-based regionalizations like scatial algorithms or similar or red cap and, and so on. But this is usually too computationally demanding because those algorithms doesn't work with uh, thousands or tens of thousands of cells. So then we put this slick algorithm uh, in between as a pre-processing step. And then we can try to compare different approaches to get some regions. And uh, uh, from on the software side, we used uh, R and mostly the supercells package I mentioned before, but also uh, RGODA package for uh, this regionalization process and regional package to calculate quality of our results. So let's see what we uh, so let's see what we've done on three examples. The first example is based on spatial pattern. So the example is that we are right now in Western Algeria and we have fields of dunes. 
And our goal is uh, to count dunes. I want to know how many dunes there are in this area. So we tried two approaches. One approach is we calculated geomorphons, so basically categorized this area into te 10 categories, and then we looked in a window of 10, 5 by 5, and we basically know like, what's the relationship, spatial relationship between value for the cells. And the second approach is the basic approach of just using uh, three first three principal components. So we are just like faking RGB uh, values. Uh, so what we've done, we just created uh, supercells, and then uh, using the, our algorithm and the original approach, and we then applied k-means uh, to, 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 to cluster them. And here you can see that's, the, that's our results and that's the original workflow results. And uh, maybe it will be very much, much easier to see on the table. You can see that uh, all of the accuracy measures were much, much better using the extended approach because then we care and we think and we know not only about what's the value, but we know about what's the spatial relation. So that's the first example. The second example is we have fractional land cover. So for each cell, we don't have one value, we have uh, eight values. So for example, one cell is 70% forest and 30% shrubland. And I want to create regions that are consistent, that are homogeneous, uh, but different from others. So that's, that's my, my goal. So in this uh, example, we used two steps. The first step was to create supercells. So again, two approaches. One approach, uh, this extended uh, sleek with Jensen Shannon divergence versus Euclidean, the, the previous approach. And here, the results are very, very similar. Uh, but then we applied second step uh, and tried to regionalize them. So this is our approach. So the, our sleek plus uh, the skater algorithm. Here is the k-means, and here is the original approach. And I think even, even if you look visually, they are, look very, very differently. Because with k-means, for example, we have large areas here and here, and we have a lot of tiny areas. We don't have control over homogeneity of our regions. It's much, much nicer with both sleeks. However, you also need to remember that our supercells uh, here and here have slightly different topology. So then when if you re regionalize them, the region, regions will be different. So I calculated what's the homogeneity, so how consistent internally uh, my regions are, and I calculated isolation, so how my regions are different from the neighbors. And you can see that in both uh, uh, quality metrics, the, our new approach is better than the, uh, the, the alternatives I tried. And finally, the third example is of time series. So what I have here, I have just uh, Great Britain, and I have two-dimensional time series. Uh, so the first dimension is 12 values of monthly, uh, um, average monthly precipitation, and the second time series is of uh, average monthly uh, temperature. Both uh, values were normalized from 0 uh, to 1. And then, if we have values from 0 to 1, we can think about every cell in our data, in our raster data, as just this kind of graph. So you can see that this, for example, in this location, we have changes. So we start in, in uh, January, and then the, the precipitation de uh, declines, but the temperature grows. And in different areas, for example here, precipitation is stable through the year, but the temperature changes. So what I've done, again, two approaches. Our idea versus the original uh, algorithm. And see, here you can see that basically that's London. We have stable uh, precipitation through year, but different uh, temperature. And here it's Scotland, when you have like huge uh, precipitation and kind of changeable through, through year. And in this approach, in our extended sleek, we use dynamic time warping instead of the, using uh, the Euclidean distance. So what are the results? Here you have a comparison, a visual comparison of the two results, only for seven regions. So we just wanted to create like very general uh, regions with similar precipitation and temperature. And the colors in the background are basically the distance uh, of the values from London. So if you have the red colors, it's, 
It has similar uh, time series values as London, and if it's blue, it's very, very dissimilar from London. And you can see visually at least that there, there are uh, very, very, um, uh, they, they, they look very differently. And then when you calculate statistics, now we have slightly different results. So now our approach has better incomogeneity, which means that it's more internally consistent, but the original approach has better isolation. So the original approach was, again, we just compressed these 24 uh, values into uh, just three principal components. So we basically compressed that data. But the data, when we compressed that, we discovered that first three principal components, they explained 99% uh, of variability. So, what, so how, to, how to summarize everything I, I've showed you? So first of all, the, the algorithm we propose just extends the original slick algorithm. So now you don't need to only think about images. You can think of histograms, time series, uh, pattern data. So you don't need to um, use PCA to re reduce uh, uh, dimensions. You don't need to convert that to full score. You, you can directly work on the data as your data is. Uh, and then your, your, your important uh, go goal of yours is to decide what's the distance measure you should use. What's the proper distance measure and not only using Euclidean to every problem uh, that you have. You also seen that I, I tried this approach on several examples, and most of the time, the new approach gives better results. And, but but uh, at the same time, we discovered that the, the quality of the new results, so the quality of the new approach, is, is better uh, proportionally to the compression of the data. So if you can compress your data to three dimensions and it's still like 99% variability kept, you can still use the original approach. But if you compress your data to three dimensions and then you see that the variability is even 95% or 90% or 80%, then our approach will probably give uh, better results. So you can, you can find all of those slides on, on my website. I also uh, put the link uh, in the app. And uh, there, are, there is a related, of course, conference paper, but there is also, we were able last month to publish a journal paper with, uh, which explains all of those examples. Uh, so hopefully they will be useful for you. And I also put some links to the uh, software that I used. So the software to create those uh, spatial superpixels, so to create those supercells, to calculate what are the quality of regions, so what's the inhomogeneity and what's the isolation of regions, and also uh, a package that allows you to create those regions, so uh, apply, for example, the SCATEL uh, algorithm. So that's all for me. I hope that that will be useful in, in your work. Thank you. Uh, now it's time for questions.